I talk a lot about RMC on this channel, not because it's the best, but because it's the most popular. It's not the best, not even close. The truth is, the best parks don't even need RMCs or Intamins or GCIs. The best parks have Vacomas. And I'm not talking about that new generation garbage. I'm talking about the violently intense old school Vacomas. What's better than one Vacoma? Lots of Vacomas. But today, I wanna to focus on two models. Two models that make up what I call the dynamic duo. The boomerang and the suspended looping coaster. The holy grail of thrills. The thing every park should strive for. These are the top 10 parks with the most dynamic of dynamic duos. First, let's look at parks that had a shot at glory and then f***ed up. Six Flags Kentucky Kingdom had Vampire and T2 for four glorious years between 1995 and 1999. But then they did the stupidest thing they could possibly do and sent Vampire to another park. T2 tried, but couldn't keep the park afloat itself. And it closed following the 2009 season. When the park reopened in 2014, we were all hoping for a new boomerang to replace the one they lost. But we got this stupid chance hyper thing instead. The park suffered so much that the new owners ended up selling it in 2021. Six Flags Fiesta Texas installed half the dynamic duo in 1999. And we've been waiting for two decades to complete the deal. When the park removed their Shoot the Shoot ride in 2017, we were all anticipating the arrival of an SLC, and Six Flags once again let us down by putting in this stupid Raptor. Six Flags is so cheap that they couldn't even buy a coaster with two rails. Pathetic. Great Escape was so close to achieving glory. They installed Flashback in 1997, and right when it looked like they'd never reached the ultimate goal, bam, Six Flags Astroworld shuts down, and suddenly, Serial Thriller is on its way to upstate New York. It arrives in 2005 and sits there, and sits there, and sits there. And after four years, it gets shipped up to Canada. Great escape? This is why no one likes you. Finally, we have Jaga Lake, a park that had been around since 1889, but took until 1996 to get Mind Eraser, and 1998 to get Serial Thriller. This was when the park was awesome. Then Six Flags decides to put in a whole bunch of horrible rides, ran the park into the ground, and not even the dynamic duo could save it. This top 10 has 11 entries because it does. Number 11, Canada's Wonderland. The Bat and Flight Deck carried this park through most of its history up until 2006, when Paramount unloaded the park onto Cedar Fair, and it's really gone to hell from there. They've put in a few BNNs or SNMs or whatever you call these, and they suck. They don't shake you around at all. They're just smooth. If I wanted that, I could have just stayed home on my couch. Yukon Striker even has shoulder restraints that completely avoid your head. What's the point of these if your head can't pinball between them? If Canada's Wonderland keeps this up, they'll go the way of Geauga Lake soon. Just make sure you leave Bat and Flight Deck alone. Number 10, Wallaby Holland. You have to appreciate Condor for being the pioneer of all suspended looping coasters. Just think, without this coaster, where would the coaster world be right now? It's painful to even think about. The Wallaby group didn't do the park any more favors after that, and Six Flags had to come along to complete the job. In 2000, La Via Volta opened. Six Flags wasn't in charge for long, but they did what had to be done. The new owners ruined it in 2011, putting in new trains that have restraints that don't even come close to your ears. And they added sound and special effects, as if this amazing ride needed a gimmick to be good. This hurts its ranking. Same with the closure of its awesome Vacoma wooden coaster, to make it this half wood, half steel weirdness. Like, make up your mind, what are you? Hurting your park, that's what. Number nine, Wallaby Belgium. Six Flags to the rescue again, this time adding both Vampire and Cobra in 1999 and then 2001. They were in charge from 1998 to 2004, and this is just about all they did during their tenure. Well, they did add a wooden coaster, but at least they made sure it was also from Vacoma. Wallaby Belgium will never get those Six Flags days back, as these days, the new ownership group is adding things like Conda. I don't know who they're trying to please here, but maybe it'll take some of the massive lines away from Vampire and Cobra. Number eight, Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. This park has been around in its current location as a marine park since 1986. But in 1996, the park was bought out by Premier Parks, and they decided to build some coasters. But not just any coasters. In 1998, Kong and Boomerang Coast to Coaster were added. The park was perfect. They've added 12 coasters since. Some have came and gone, but the OG stars of the park remain. It's just too bad that Medusa stands right there in the front, while Kong is tucked behind it, and Boomerang is way out there where nobody can see it. These should be the first coasters you see when you enter the park. If that was the case, maybe they'd have better attendance numbers. 
Number seven, Six Flags Mexico. While all the other Six Flags parks were getting the dreadful Batman the Ride inverted coasters, Six Flags got Batman the Ride for Mexico also. And since it was their first year operating the park, they did them one better. This would be a Batman the Ride SLC. I'm sure they knew they had the opportunity to complete the dynamic duo. That's probably the reason they bought the park in the first place. Seeing that boomerang dating all the way back to 1988 and knowing they had a shot at making the park great, they did. Number six, Six Flags Darien Lake. Before Premier Parks bought this out in 1995, it was pointless. They made sure the first thing they did was to fix it. Not only did they add Mind Eraser in 1997, they put it right in the front of the park so everyone could just marvel at the head smashing fun they were about to have. They even made it extra shaky because they had high hopes for this park. They completed the duo with Boomerang Coaster Coaster just a year later, and the park was set. After adding that trashy Intamin Hyper in 1999, the park was never the same. Six Flags dumped the park in 2007, but that dynamic duo brought them back into the game 11 years later. Number five, Maury's Piers. This is a weird park since it's made up of a few different piers, but it's a park nonetheless, and one with a pair of amazing coasters. Sea Serpent was one of the very first boomerangs, opening the same time as three others back in 1984. So thank you Maury's Piers for being a pioneer. The Great Nor'easter used to be better before they butchered the trains in 2017 with those awful vest restraints. The bulk of those over-the-shoulder restraints is the key factor in making the SLC what it is, so they might as well take it out at this point. Number four, La Ronde. When Six Flags took this over in 2001, they really screwed up. They plopped in a B&M invert called Vampire, fully knowing that they had a boomerang right there, another one of the originals dating back to 1984. All hope seemed lost. And then they were presented with a rare opportunity. We talked about Serial Thriller leaving Astro World in 2005, and then just sitting there at Great Escape for four long years. It looked like Great Escape was poised to become the next great American park, but it was Canada that was about to get the massive boost it needed. After the disaster that was Goliath four years earlier, Laron finally got their SLC. It didn't matter they already had a B&M invert. Screw that. They got something better. They call it Ednor, because that's Ron, backwards, for some reason. But it doesn't matter. It was such a perfect addition that Six Flags saw no reason to ever bring another coaster into the park for the next 10 years. Well, until they saw the chance to get a coaster even better than the dynamic duo, if that's even possible. Number three, Wild Adventures. Sometimes people wonder why Hershen Family Entertainment hasn't added a real coaster here since they took over in 2007. Is it the park's location? I think it's a stupid question. Unlike a lot of these parks, they looked at their coaster collection and they knew there was nothing that they could do to improve it. They could only make it worse. Their only two extreme coasters are Boomerang and Twisted Typhoon. The park's first two coasters to open when the park was transformed from Liberty Farms Animal Park to Wild Adventures. They had to add a few other coasters for kids, which is understandable. And in 2021, they decided to close their wooden coaster because why do you need that? It was just distracting everyone from their spectacular dynamic duo. Number two, Elitch Gardens. Dating back to 1890, Elitch Gardens had to find a new home after the 1994 season. It reopened in a new location in 1995, and they had Sidewinder, an arrow shuttle loop that was relocated from the old park, and Twister 2, the successor of Mr. Twister, that did not make the move with the park. Attendance was in the dumps during the first two years, so ownership sold Elitch Gardens two premier parks, and they knew exactly what to do. Mind Eraser opened for the 1997 season, and to get more people into the park, they really cranked up the rattle on this one. That was a good start, but to get the park where it really needed to be, two years later, they got their boomerang. That was all the park needed to succeed. Five years later, they got a half pipe, which who cares? That thing wasn't even open when I went, and I didn't even mind. They made sure that dynamic duo was open. And if you don't want to ride Twister 2, that's fine. Just stand there and watch it sway. Yeah, that's nice. Number one, Six Flags New England. Here's another tiny park that was saved by Premier Parks. They really knew how to build up a park in the late 90s. And Riverside Park, now known as Six Flags New England, was no exception. With just an old wooden coaster and a kid's coaster in the park, Premier slammed it out of the park right away with Mind Eraser in 1997, but they were just getting started. In 2000, they added three new coasters. Two were honestly pretty awful, Catwoman's Whip and Superman Ride of Steel, but the crown jewel of the bunch was Flashback. Yes, the newly named Six Flags New England just fleeced Kentucky Kingdom of their dynamic duo, completing one of their own. Just like Maury's peers, the park did ruin its SLC with new trains for the 2018 season, where your head is free and open, and there's no chance you'll hit it against anything. So why is this number one? I'll tell you why. Because this park did something that no park in history has ever dared to do, and that was put a second Vacoma boomerang in the same park. 
Did they at least try to separate them to create the illusion that they weren't the same thing? No, they put them right next to each other, roller coaster tycoon style. Deja Vu at Six Flags Magic Mountain was a piece of garbage. So after 10 years, they shipped it off. Six Flags New England knew exactly what they could do to make it great. They dumped the original Vacoma trains and added brand new Premier trains, plopped some square wheels on them, made them sway side to side. And there you have it, the brilliant Goliath. Six Flags New England has a dynamic duo and then some. Goliath more than makes up for what the park did to their SLC. Thank you all so much for watching. Before you go, make sure you smash that like button, that subscribe button, and especially smash that bell so you don't miss any more hot takes like this. Happy April Fool's Day, and I'll see you all next time.